Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my QuickBooks tutorials. My name is Zach Pascarello. I'm a bookkeeper and a certified QuickBooks online pro advisor. I own my own bookkeeping business, Harrisburg Bookkeeping, located in South Central Pennsylvania. We have clients all over the country, California, Texas, Florida, and we serve a lot of clients here locally as well. So I'm here today to talk about some QuickBooks tips and tricks for you, help explain some things. Hopefully if, if you're a new business owner or if you're new to QuickBooks and you have some questions, I'll be able to help explain some things and help make things a little bit easier for you. So if you are a new business owner, I'm sure you've heard about QuickBooks or if you haven't heard about QuickBooks, it is accounting software. It is very powerful if you know how to leverage it, how to utilize it properly. There are some basic functions, there are some more advanced functions. And today I just wanted to talk about the bank feed. So this enables you to connect your bank account, your checking account, savings account, credit cards, directly to your QuickBooks. So over here on the left hand side, once you log into your QuickBooks account, and this is just the sample company, um, the banking here on the left, you would just go to banking, and then it brings you to this bank feed. And these are fake checking accounts and savings accounts and credit card accounts for this sample company on QuickBooks. And then once you get to your bank feed, you would just click this button in the top right hand corner to link an account. And then you just search for your bank in here. And then once you search for your bank, you click on it, it'll prompt you to type in your username and your password. It might have some security questions for you. It might send that ever present six or seven digit code to your cell phone. And then you can log into your bank and then you can upload all of your transactions directly from your bank or your credit card or your checking account into QuickBooks. So it'll look something like this once you've uploaded your bank feed. And QuickBooks is pretty good about having almost all of the big national banks and credit card companies, and they also have most of the smaller credit unions and the small checking accounts. One thing I will say is that if they do not have your bank account yet, first of all, I'd encourage you to probably send them an email, send them a message, see if they can get your credit union or your bank associated with QuickBooks, that way it'll be a lot easier for you. But in the meantime, you can upload from a file. So if you go to your bank account or your credit card, you can download your transactions directly onto your computer as a .qbo file or a .csv file. And then you can upload the file directly into your QuickBooks. And I'll make a video explaining that at a later date. That is super useful if you're not able to connect your bank feed directly to QuickBooks. So once you have uploaded your bank feed and connected your bank to QuickBooks, it'll look something like this, checking, savings, and credit card, whatever accounts you have associated with your business, I would highly recommend that you connect it here. It'll save you a lot of time with some manual data entry. So this is just a virtual representation of your bank. Whatever you do here will not physically affect your actual bank account. So you can see here, you've got your bank balance, what's actually in your bank, and then your QuickBooks balance. So typically you want these numbers to be as close as possible. That way your accounts are reconciled. If they aren't, that's not a problem. We can go in and reconcile your accounts. And then that's another video I can make in the future, how to reconcile your checking accounts. But you definitely, definitely want to be reconciling all of your business checking accounts every single month just to make sure the balances are accurate. So once you have your bank feed here, you can see three tabs right here for review. And then there's a categorized tab. And then there is an excluded tab. So everything right now is for review, which means it's been uploaded, but it has not been put anywhere. And it is up to you as the business owner or if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant, it is up to you to categorize all of these transactions. So once you categorize them, they will be added to your general ledger wherever you tell QuickBooks to put them. 
So once again, this is a fake company. So we can look here and we'll find one as a good example. So this is, I think, a landscaping company and not entirely sure what this transaction is, but as, as the business owner or as the accountant, you would, you would have a clear understanding of all these transactions. So for example, this is a rental right here. It's listed as an uncategorized expense. You spent $1,200 on April 20th. So we can categorize it. Right here, we can tell QuickBooks who did we pay, the vendor. If your vendor is not listed here, you can start typing Joe Smith, and then you can add Joe Smith as the vendor. Or if it's somebody who is already here, we can go ahead and choose Books by Bessie. Not sure who Bessie is, but and then the category. So this is either an expense or a cost of goods sold. So however you want to categorize this $1,200, let's see here, A1. So here we have the bank details. It's kind of like the bank memo, the details provided by your bank. That'll help sometimes shed some light as to how you want to categorize if you forget you know, what you spent your money on. A rental so we can go here through our list of expenses and we can try to find something that would make the most sense so probably equipment rental would make the most sense for this expense here $1,200 and then we can allocate it to a specific project and I can go over projects more in a future video but if we want we can type the the customer or the project that way if you're working on Billy Bob or John Smith's house as a carpenter and you want to track all of your expenses and income associated with that specific customer and that specific project you can see how profitable one project is so that's a really powerful tool and feature inside of QuickBooks to be able to track specific projects and then for the the memo here you can really type whatever you want this is just for your records so we could say, you know, let's see, rental, backhoe rental, we can say equipment rental, Joe Smith, house renovation. So there's the memo. And then whenever we add it, this expense automatically gets added to our general ledger. And then it'll also be added to our profit and loss. So we can go here and see categorized April 20th, a rental added to expenses, job expense. If you made a mistake, not a big deal. You can undo or you can click this here and you can see some more details. So here it came out of the checking account the date, category, description, amount, and the memo is right there. So it takes a little bit of the manual data entry out of doing it the other way of adding an expense that way, but it's the exact same thing. So there's an expense, here's an expense, the exact same, just two different ways to do it. If for whatever reason you want to exclude a transaction because maybe it wasn't associated with your business, maybe you don't have a business checking account and you just have a personal checking account and you uploaded your personal checking account here, you can select the transaction there and then you can exclude it. And it won't be added to your general ledger, it won't be added to your profit and loss. There it's excluded, so it doesn't count. If you already like the way something is categorized, let's see here, March 7th, Hicks Hardware, job expense, you can simply add instead of opening it. And then just like that, it is added to our chart of accounts, our general ledger, our profit and loss. So by adding these expenses, they would be 
a debit for double for double entry account and a debit to job expenses and a credit to the checking account. They are increasing your job expenses and decreasing the amount of money you have in your checking account. So if you are doing journal entries, it is the same concept. They're $24.38 added to your job expenses and subtracted from your checking account. The last thing I wanted to talk about would be rules. So rules can be helpful. They can also not be helpful if you create a rule and sometimes the artificial intelligence for QuickBooks tries to automatically categorize and report transactions. I would just encourage you to be careful whenever creating a rule. I can create a video in the future specifically going over how to create a rule, but whenever you create a rule, QuickBooks will automatically take transactions from your bank feed and automatically categorize them. So if you've got transactions that are coming out every single month that are the exact same, going to the exact same place, no questions asked, pretty straightforward, you could create a rule. Let's say you're paying your electricity bill to PPL every single month on the 20th, and you want QuickBooks to automatically categorize that as utilities, then you could set up a rule. Every transaction that comes from PPL automatically report that as, as utilities. And QuickBooks will then go ahead and categorize that for you. Just double check, make sure that QuickBooks isn't categorizing transactions incorrectly. So just because you set up a rule doesn't mean you should just forget about it and never look into it. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know for the bank feed. Pretty basic. It can really help categorizing transactions. It can help reduce the amount of manual data entry you have. I hope this video helps. Let me know if you want me to talk about anything else specifically. Once again, my name is Zach Pascarello, and I'm a bookkeeper. I'm a certified QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, and my company is Harrisburg Bookkeeping. So if, if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out. Give me a call. Send me an email. I am always happy to help. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you all have a great day.